Hello, welcome back to our final video. I am Megan, as you probably all know by now, and with me is the beautiful Jen. And today we are going to try and wrap this up a little bit as best that we can. And I think the best way that Jen and I can do this is to have an open and honest discussion about how we feel we have integrated trauma and how uh, speaking from the experiences that we've had and also from the place where we are now, looking back, I think is a really valuable thing to do. Um, but it would be great to just have a roundtable discussion and to let you be a fly on the wall and to let you into this as we kind of break down some of the things that have happened along our journey and looking back as to how we can move forward with trauma and how that has looked for us. Mm, yes. Hi, everyone. Welcome to video six. We did it. We're here. And like Megan said, we're going to try to um, bring this all together in a beautiful container, in a beautiful package. Um, you know, we walk through what is PTSD, stigma, the shame, um, the healing modalities, how it affects our brain and our body. And now we're here, coming back to self, coming back to how we are living our day-to-day -day lives uh, with trauma being part of our story. You know, like, right, it was so funny because right before we started to record, <laughs> Megan and I were just having this, like, beautiful, natural discussion about how trauma becomes part of your life and part of your story, but it's not until we lean into it, not until we go through this journey that we're able to say that, that we're able to feel comfortable to say that. And we can move from, like we're in this observer's mind um, and we're not in the loop, we're not in the trauma. Cause like Megan said, like when we bring ourselves back to where we used to be, I mean, honestly, I, there, someone told me that, oh, you know, you have to, do this and this and this, I'd be like frozen. I'm still frozen, right? So I really would love us to maybe talk more about that, the, the point after trauma to when you start to integrate it as a tapestry of your life, when you start to share it as part of your story. Like, like you said earlier, like it's that, that journey, right? Yeah. And I think something that is important to point out that we all intrinsically know anyway is that PTSD, trauma, pregnancy loss, this whole journey is not linear. It's like, it's like that meme on um, Instagram that's like, you know, what I thought the journey would be, would look like, what the journey actually is. <laughs> and, and it's true. It's, it's not this step-by-step -step logical protocol that there's this little manual for so that you can Google, I experienced pregnancy loss and there's like a bam, bam, bam. I wish, we all wish, that would be so easy, that, or not even easy, but it would, it would make sense. It would help us make sense of some of the things that have happened. Um, and that's the hard thing about PTSD is that you, you will make progress and the very nature of PTSD is once you start making progress and when your brain starts to go, I'm safe, I have the space to now integrate something else, it will take you back. It will take you back into your nervous system. It will take you back to memories and it will take you back to the places that you need to resolve um, in your journey. Um, and it will allow you to revisit things and process things once you have created a little bit of space and once there's um, the potential there for you to integrate a new thing about your journey. And I think that um, I think that that's really beautiful, but it's also really hard. It's hard to feel like you're making progress and then you feel like you're back at step one. You're not actually at step one. You've taken 20 steps. Um, it just fit, but that feeling of going back always kind of feels the same. But I think uh, further along the journey, you're able to come back out of that 
quicker as you get the tools and resources to cope and to process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so incredibly important to, and that's where like the self-compassion comes in and, and the self-forgiveness. It's like you put in all this incredible work and then one day you feel like you're not far back to square one because you're right. Like even just having this awareness, even watching these videos, even being here is a massive step forward or a massive step on. Like, so it could be that some days you um, are thinking you're doing really, really well. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm breathing again. I'm feeling great. And then something gets you. Something pulls you back. But the great thing about your journey is when you lean into the journey and you start to heal is that it pulls you back, but it doesn't pull you back as far as it used to, right? Like it's like, a, it's like okay, I'm, I'm back here. I know where back here is. I know what I need to do. Self-compassion, self-forgiveness. It's going to be a crazy day today. I know healing is like this. Grief is like this. And then with that awareness and self compassion you're able to move you're able to accept right like yeah. it's really important to know that you won't ever really go back 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 i i truly believe because i i know that with awareness just that awareness that oh something traumatic happened to me or the awareness that um oh i've been identified with ptsd that in itself just propels you into your journey and the journey itself is is so important and like Meg and I were talking about how we see these people or I don't know lack of a better word but gurus or you know they've been through the pain and now they've created purpose and they're living with like joy and happiness and they get up at four o'clock in the morning and they're just like yeah jazz hands <laughs> and you're like Hmm, what did they hear? Like, what are they doing? But yeah, I think, and you said it really well before, glor that's kind of glorified because that's where we all want to be. We want to all want to be positive. We want to be happy. We want life to be just manifesting just rainbows and unicorns and just, but that's not life. That's not real life. Real life is ebbs and flows and opposites and and black and white and pain and grief and joy. And it's really important to know that it's always a dance. There's always a dance. But in this journey, in this incredible journey that you're brave enough to take, the beautiful thing is you come back to yourself. You come back to self. You come back to your spirit, your soul. Um, and then from there, you can start to live each day with having trauma as part of your story. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> and Jen, yeah, Jen and I were talking just before we press record about <laughs> how, um, how the stigma that's attached with PTSD and also, this, also the stigma with pregnancy loss, there's a lot that overlaps in those two stories, is that um, it's really hard when you're in the midst of it to find examples and to find um, to find encouragement and acknowledgement for the in-between space between trauma happening and between integration and healing. And like there's exactly like Jen said, this ebbs and flow process that happens in the middle. But in our culture, we don't show the middle. We don't show the sticky parts. We don't show the darkness. We don't show the crying on the bathroom floor. We don't show um, the depths of how our life is impacted by PTSD and by pregnancy loss. And I think that that is a big part of what perpetuates, um, perpetuates trauma, is that this part isn't spoken about as much. And, yeah, I know. Oh my God, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, girl. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's so true because 
and I guess we're sharing this just to create awareness around this, but when I had to terminate our twin pregnancy, it wasn't spoken about. It wasn't, no one talked about it. There was such a shame around it. And that is almost, and I've read literature around this as well, that not acknowledging it is, can be, and is as, is, is worse than the actual trauma itself. Um, it can be. Um, and I know my psychotherapist had mentioned, talk, talk, spoke about that as well. It's like, it's that secondary trauma. Um, it's like when you share something horrific that's happened to you, that's the you know, loss of the baby or whatever, and people aren't re recognizing it, or if people aren't, um, sorry, uh, people aren't recognizing it and people aren't able to, to talk about it or they create the shame around it. Um, that is trauma again. So you've got your traumatic event and then you've got your trauma. Um, and that's what happened to me when I, with our twins, you know, like I couldn't talk to anybody about it. No one wanted to hear about it. No one could believe I had to, I, why did you make that decision? You know, and they didn't understand that the steps, the journey just to get to that decision <laughs> and then having to make that decision, going through the decision and then no one acknowledging what happened. I mean, that's like trauma, trauma, yeah. trauma. Totally. And as a culture, we don't know how to respond to that. We don't know how to respond to, we don't even know what to say when someone says, I've had to terminate my twins. I've had a miscarriage. There's this pause and this confusion and this like anxiety that you feel from the other person that also rises in you to try and like to block other people's discomfort. And it's this cycle because all we've learned is to celebrate the end result of I'm healed and I'm going to, tell my story about how now I live in riches and in a mansion because I've written a book and made millions of dollars off of it or whatever it is. And that's amazing. Those people are great because they tell their story. And I think that that's where, that's the part that we can use to encourage us that when we hear other people telling their story, that it gives us permission to share our own and then thereby by us telling our story it gives people permission to share their story and so it's this cycle and I think you know I still haven't figured it out trauma is an ongoing life journey but I think that telling our stories is such a primal part of who we are as humans. We've been doing it for thousands of years around campfires and painting in caves and telling the stories of the tragedy and the love and the loss. And that's how, that's how we understand other, like, you know, archaeological cultures is by, you know, look at this and look at this tragic event that happened that wiped out these people. And that's how we start to understand and create sympathy. And I think that that's, we have to look back sometimes to move forward in that the way that we can create these relationships and conversations and the way that we can create understanding is to tell our stories. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It, the story, the, the healing aspect of storytelling is so profound on a primal level. That is how we've survived is through storytelling. And we've lost that art of storytelling. Thus, we have forgotten how to normalize, normalize our pain, our trauma. When we share, we start to normalize pregnancy loss, miscarriages, stillbirths, neonatal deaths. Speaking about it normalizes the emotions and the feelings that go along with it. When we don't talk about it, and I know some people find it incredibly painful to talk about it, some people rather not speak about it, and we all are trying to survive in our own way, but I do invite people to start to create an awareness of why they don't want to share. Um, just lean into it and be curious about it, because I know by sharing, 
we, we heal. We heal on a level that we don't even see. Like it's an energetic plane that we just aren't able to comprehend at this point in time, but we do heal on that energetic level. And it's the normalizing. It's normalizing. We talked about this, I think, in video two with the shame and the stigma, but the 12-week rule. Why is this 12-week rule put in place? Normalize it. Normalize it. Miscarriages, pregnancy loss, it's a crappy situation. I wish it never happened to anybody. It's so horrific to go through. But we can normalize the situation in the way that we can talk about it happens. It's painful. It's traumatizing. And we're humans. We're having a human experience. That is why I think is really important. And that's why, you know, for this video, we're talking about, I guess, our thoughts around around all of it, but also with the um, the why or the foundation of knowing that sharing our story is healing. That there is a healing journey to be had. That it's not linear. That it can be up and down, but it's a human experience that we're all having. And then when we have it as a collective and a round table like this, and even having space, holding space with Megan and all of you, this is where the healing really happens. This is where we come back to ourselves. This is where it kind of comes back full circle. Mm. Does that make sense? 100%, yeah, so beautiful. Oh, wow. So the... So apart from us talking about our personal experiences with this, there is some things in the research to show um, there's been some studies that show comparison groups between people who did who have done certain things to help them process their trauma and people who didn't do certain things. So there's a couple of key points here. Um, and I think that they give us a really nice framework because they really support the stories that we're actually telling now. And so a couple of the things that people who have experienced trauma have done that have um, helped them through processing the trauma is having continuous contact with and support from important people in their life. And I think that trauma, pregnancy loss, it can be so easy to retreat. Um, there is something instinctive and I think it is important to retreat for a period of time to allow your, to, especially on a physiological level, to allow your body to process the hormones and to, and to bleed. Those things are, um, are very shifting in our physiology and to create space to allow that process to happen is important. But the point also is, it's really, really important to come back out of that, to seek support and to allow the people in your life who will stand by you to do that, to allow you to feel held. Because I can guarantee you that not everything in your life is going to run completely smoothly and you're going to need people to help you keep ends tied together. So that was number one, continuous contact and support from people in your life. And then number two, disclosing the trauma to loved ones. And like Jen said, this one's really hard. It's really hard to talk about it and to open up. But even if you just start like with one person, even if you start by something that I found helpful was I opened a Word doc and I typed my story and I typed my feelings. And then I think I, think I did it a few times. One time I just deleted it, but it just felt so cathartic to have written out my story and to see it on paper. Um, do you want me to read a few more? Oh yeah, I'm I'm, just, I'm like writing notes because this is <laughs> this is amazing. Like it's like yeah. No, uh, you, you keep going. Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> the next one is identifying as a survivor as opposed to a victim. Oh, this is huge Ooh. and hard. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to gloss and say like. Oh, you just change your mindset and become a survivor as opposed to a victim. It doesn't happen like that. Um, it's but it's over time. And the the cathartic thing and the therapeutic thing about telling your story is that you you get to tell the story as to which character you play. You get you get to describe yourself and the things that either happened to you or happened from you. You can I think 
Jen, you may be able to talk a little bit about this with some of the training that you're doing about language. I think it's really important that as we move forward, that the way that we talk about ourselves and to ourselves is something that we take note of, something that we have control over is like the language that we use, even when everything else is out of control, we can still choose that inner voice and identifying when we're being too critical of ourselves, which is so easy to do, and identifying the way that we talk about ourselves in the stories that we tell. Um, if you wouldn't speak about a friend in the way that you speak about yourself, we'll check in, you know. Mm, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's really important. And um the narratives that we tell, it's so interesting. As you were sharing that, I wrote the word narrative down because when we're here talking about coming back to self and the healing journey, um, you know, trauma becomes part of your narrative. And it's really that healing journey is really moving through that narrative from a place of, you know, victim like the acute grief of pregnancy loss you're right you have to retreat you have to retreat in order for your body to to process and that's the brain that's the body that's the hormones that's everything and then once you come out of your retreat you're in a different part of your narrative and i think it's really important to like trauma changes you your body and your mind. And the recovery really depends on how, it depends, the recovery, what am I trying to say here? I'm having so many downloads at the moment. The, the, the recovery is, is part of your narrative. So basically, it's your narrative. It's your story. So as you're going through this journey back to self, don't compare yourself to anybody else. Don't think, oh, well, they're here and why am I over here? Or they've done this and this and this and this. Even with Megan and I sharing, like Megan spoke about this in the last video, even with us sharing, and you're like, well, Megan did this and this, so I'm gonna do this and this. Like, it's just, it's, it's your narrative, it's your story. And that's why we always say, try everything, try what resonates with you. But knowing your narrative, knowing where you are in your narrative and sharing your narrative, whew, is so healing for the soul because what happens with trauma is we lose trust, we lose that connection, we lose ourselves and like, when you come back to your narrative and you share your story, you create connection with community. You start to trust a little bit more. You start to become witnessed. You start to be carried. You start to be seen. And so all the stuff that trauma kind of effed up and tore apart with telling your narrative, it's almost like you're reclaiming. It's almost like um, you're being seen again. Yeah, yeah. And I think tr what trauma can do is make us feel powerless. It can, mm, yes. it can take us out of our power because it's shocking. It changes our physiology. It changes all of the control that we have spent years mastering. Um, like even the physical changes, even the, you know, the way that your hips will move and your boots change, all of those things. And um, and they're very physical reminders of things that have been taken out of your control. And so to be able to tell your story allows you to reclaim that power back. Just mm. every, every, and every time you cycle through a story of telling it, I think you might focus on a new detail, you might remember a new thing, and you might, the other thing that I find interesting is you'll probably hear yourself tell the story differently sometimes. And I think that that's a really amazing awareness moment when you can listen to yourself and go, oh, I'd forgotten that part or I didn't realise I felt that way or wow, I'm, I'm hearing myself. And that, that shift, that's powerful. That, that movement from A to B there. It's 
super powerful. And I think you said it, like we moved from a place of um, not having power, not having what we thought we had control of, or we thought we felt some kind of control gets completely shattered, right? And I guess with these video series and this discussion, this round table, we're allowing the space to have the discussion um, so that you can find yourself in a leader role or find that your power again in some parts. Um, yeah, and it starts with awareness and it starts with discussion and knowing that you're not alone. This is community here. And um, yeah, and healing is not linear. He healing takes like a lifetime. And I think what happens is sometimes the healing is thick. Sometimes the healing is uncomfortable. Sometimes it's icky and it's like, Ugh, I don't want to do it. And other times healing may feel lighter. Healing might feel like it's a dance of joy. And so healing takes so many different types of forms and shapes and, and yeah, it becomes part of your narrative. Mm. The next part on the, the next points in the research, um, I'm going to, I'll tell you what they are first and then, okay. then we'll talk about them. It's, it's finding positive meaning in the trauma and it's um, being able to laugh and experience positive emotions and I'm in several different minds about this in regards to pregnancy loss and Jen and I have spoken about this before in um, a non-recorded conversation and we talk about it over on Instagram about how when you're in baby loss gratitude is hard and pretty much impossible to start with and and this also comes back to it's when we see the end results of these gurus and these people that we really idolize and who the media has um, really put on a pedestal when they tell their story and they say and and I've learned these lessons from this and and they're able to describe their positive meanings and we kind of only see that part but to get there is I'm going to say that sometimes we also have to say bad things happen. And when we lose babies, we don't always have to look at that and say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try and find something positive in there. We don't, I think that that's really maybe not applicable to baby loss in that we look at the death of a baby as a positive thing. I think, and this will be different to everyone that, when that some of the lessons that we have learned can be the things that enrich us but it's not always a positive thing and we can learn to look at like like for example for me I have learned a great deal of empathy and I have connected with women and made friends that I never would have made had I not had my miscarriages and those friendships are beautiful things and but I don't look at those friendships and I don't kind of look at the stories and you go, oh, so it was a positive thing that my baby died. Does that make sense? I feel like this is a sticky thing to try and describe. Mm. Um, and I don't know if I'm doing it justice. No, you, you, um, you are, you are, you are. And I think it's really, sorry to interrupt. I think it's really important to share this. I think it's, it's those sticky situations that we need to discuss a little bit more, I think, definitely. And, and you're right, like there's such emphasis in our society about thinking positive, manifesting, look at me, I'm what hope and positivity looks like. And that's okay to a point because our human spirit and needs some hope and needs faith and needs people to look at but there has to also be an understanding that there is a journey to get there and within that journey is where you're really going to unfold where you really are going to have to look deep into the shadow feelings and that is where the change will occur that is where you will get to know yourself that is where you will grow the empathy that is where you will see well what happened to me was crap was bad shitty um 
And I'm going to choose to see that I've now met these amazing people. I'm going to choose to see that I have em more empathy than ever. I'm going to choose to see that I do not take any BS anymore. Um, no, you don't have to go through pregnancy loss to get to that point, but you're choosing to see these things. And I think those are very important um, for your subconscious brain to understand that. So if you're going more into the NLP, neuro linguistic stuff, it's important for your brain to know that you are, your conscious brain, your subconscious brain to know that you are choosing to see these things. But I agree with you, Megan. It's not that it happened for a reason or um, I'm going to look at the positive. Like, may, yeah. I, may, I share, may I share a personal story? Is that okay? Oh, please. Um, when we lost, when we had to terminate our twins, my family, this is the one, this is the thing that they said the most was, well, it could have been worse. They could have been born with brain damage or they could have died in your arms. Like it could have been worse. So this, you know, it was meant to happen this way. And you're just like, I mean, you, there's nothing to say about that. I know, I, I understand their intention is always to try to help me move through it or move forward, but, um, but no, <laughs> just no. Yeah, and I, I think we come up against this theme a lot because it's people, when, when there's death, we, we all fear death to certain degrees. And when we speak about death, it makes other people uncomfortable. And inevitably, when we share our story and when we speak about things that make other people uncomfortable, they say these things because their subconscious brain is saying, I, I can't process death right now. Like, I don't know how else to process death. And so people will put their stuff on, on your story and on your situation. Yeah. And so they may associate it. Exactly, exactly. And people want to be positive. That's what society's told us to be, right, Megan? That's told everyone said, be positive, be positive. Try again, be positive, try again. But that again, just it's the shame, it's the stigma, it's trauma after trauma, you know. So um, I guess what we're trying to say here is um it's okay not to feel grateful, it's okay not to feel positive because you're having a human experience. Hmm. And not every human experience is rainbows and butterflies and amazing. No. And that is what it is. And I, that, that sentence is a bit of a cop out. It is what it is. But it really, it's, and it's okay for it to be what it is. It's okay for it to be a tragedy without it's, us trying to put a spin on it. I love that. I love that is so powerful that's like the exclamation mark after that's just so powerful and you know i actually use that in my mantra like it is what it is because you know we have baby loss it is baby loss and we've we've had traumatic events and we have done the work and you know it is what it is and it's not to downplay it it's not to ignore it. It's not to disassociate from it. It's more of like, this is part of our narrative. This is part of our story. It is what it is. It, it, it is. It, it, it just is. Um, I love that. I love that. And I think that's a beautiful place to, to kind of close our, our time together. Um, mm. What's your yeah. one, before we go, what's your one biggest takeaway from this whole experience of the six videos? Already the feedback that we have been getting has been overwhelming and that has been touching. Um, so thank you to every person who's messaged us and who has helped to contribute questions and things like that. Um, I think that this has really encouraged me to talk about it even more. It's empowered me to look at my own story through a new lens, through the things that I have learned through the research that we've done. And, and that's, the, that's, that's the journey of trauma, is that you can, 
you will always have this experience and this event that happened to you, but you can, but it will change. And the filters that you look at it through your life will inevitably change. And I think that there is great comfort in that. And if there's any one encouragement that I can give you, it's that the, the space that you're in right now will change. The event that happened to you will not. It's happened. But the way that you look at it and the tools that you collect, those things will change. Everything is impermanent. And I think, I think that's been my takeaway. Wow, I didn't even realise that until I said it out loud. Yeah, wow. Thank you, Jen. That's, yeah. I love that. I can see that energetically around you. It's just like, oh. Um, and I just say ditto to that as well for my, for my kind of aha takeaway from all this experience. It's just the depths of this conversation. And I think Megan and I have just started. I know we've just started. Like, this is just the start. So we will be digging into this more. We want to be able to open this space for you, continue holding the space for you, continue holding the space for you. And I think it's an extremely important discussion that we're having and that we're going to continue to have. So definitely watch this space. Um, and you're right. The edges soften. The narrative changes. Your perspective, your, your filters change. Um, you may not know it or feel it now, but it does. And you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, thank you everyone for being with us. This means the world to us. We're gonna continue the conversation on our Facebook roundtable. Like Meg and I said, watch the space. There's so much more to come. Please reach out with any aha moments or takeaways. We would love to hear from you either via email, Facebook, or Instagram. Sending you so much love. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for doing the deep work with me, Jen. And thank you to all of our watchers for going on this journey with us. Deep work is right.